بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله My brothers, I ask for your undivided attention and I ask for your help for verily I have a question and I need you to answer My brothers, who is the king of kings? Allah. Who? Allah. I said who is the king of kings? Allah. Who is the master? Allah. Who is the maker? Allah. Who is the breaker? Allah. Who is the giver? Allah. And who is the taker? Allah. It is Allah Azza wa Jal, my brothers. It is Allah Azza wa Jal that we will all meet. We praise Him. We glorify Him. Because it is only He subhanahu wa ta'ala that's worthy of praise. And we send peace and blessings upon, upon the greatest creation of Allah Azza wa Jal, and that is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers, it is absolutely impossible to illustrate the love that Sahaba had for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They loved him like they never loved before. No movie, no love story has ever illustrated the love that the Sahaba had for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because even the kuffar of Quraysh, when they sent a delegate from their own and they sent him to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to come with some peace treaty, they sent him. And when he went there, my brothers, he came back and he sat with the people of Quraysh and he says to them, O oh, people of Quraysh, I have sat with the emperors of Rome and I've sat with the leaders of the Arab tribes and I've sat with the rulers of the Persian Empire. I'm telling you, O oh, people of Quraysh, I have never seen a people love their leader like the companions love Muhammad. <coughs> so I'm telling you, make peace with this man because they will never ever give him up. You see, Rasulullah was everything to Sahaba. He was their father. He was their brother. He was their leader. He was their Habib. He was their Rasul. He was their messenger. He was their prophet. He was their coach. Companions would say when we were on the battlefield <coughs> and things would get so intense, we would run behind Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so we can get a breather while he would continue fighting. They loved him like they never loved before. In fact, one companion comes to the Prophet of Allah and he says, O oh, Prophet of Allah, when I'm with you, I'm flying. But whenever I leave you, O oh Prophet of Allah, and I go back to my family, I become depressed because I miss you. He says, then I come back and I lay my eyes on you, then I'm happy once more. But O oh Prophet of Allah, the thought came to me today that soon you will die and I will die. You will enter Jannah and inshallah I will enter Jannah. But O oh Prophet of Allah, you will be up there and I will be down there. How can Jannah be Jannah without you? So for one of the very few times that he sallallahu alayhi wasallam was speechless, I mean the man speaking the truth, until Jibreel comes down and says to the Prophet of Allah, he says, tell your men that they will be with the ones they love in Jannah. So Anas bin Malik anhu would say, there is no hadith that was more beloved to us than this hadith. For by Allah, there was no one we loved more than Muhammad, Abu Bakr and Umar. So my brothers, in the last days of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa life, Khalas, he's become ill, he's become sick. And the reality of him dying was now slowly sinking in. There was pain in Medina. There was silence. For the first time they entered into the masjid and now Rasulullah is not there to lead the prayer. In fact, Bilal would say, I used to make Adan. 
And when I used to reach Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, it was about this time that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would leave his house and enter the masjid. But now I'm making the adhan and no one's leaving the room. So my brothers, in his last days, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, though he was sick, he managed. He gathered the strength to get back on his feet and he entered the masjid while they were in salah. And Sahaba now are narrating. They said when he entered the masjid and we were in prayer, it was going to be a fitna for us. They were so happy that he's back on his feet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's with us once more. One of them said we were going to leave our prayer until he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he entered, he came to the front where Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu was leading the salah. And even Abu Bakr says, he says, I buckled, I panicked, I didn't know what to do. He came to step back and he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he placed his blessed hands on his shoulder. He says, no, Abu Bakr, this is your position from now on. And then the last day of his life, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, while he sat in that room and the agony of death was there, and his daughter Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha was there and she was crying. He says to her, my daughter, don't cry. Don't cry Fatima. For there's no pain for your father after this day. But he opened the window to the masjid. And he looked at the men that he built with his hands. And he seen his sahaba standing there. And he smiled sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He smiled my brothers, a smile. Wallahi, if you knew the value of this smile, you would give up your wealth and your family for it. I ask you, my brothers, why did he smile? A prophet of Allah, you are dying. And Islam has not reached the corners of the world. Why are you smiling? My brothers, he's smiling because he left men behind. He left soldiers behind. He left people that he knew with confidence that I can leave and they know their responsibility. Like one of the great scholars of recent times, he says, he says when Rasulullah left this dunya, he did not leave any structures behind. He didn't leave any books behind. He didn't leave any statues behind. Rather what he left was 10,000 men that he carved Quran in their hearts, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he smiled because he knew that I can leave and these men will carry on my mission. He left men like Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, my brothers. The greatest man to walk the earth after the prophets and the messengers. A man whom he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says to his sahaba, he says, I presented Islam to every one of you and every one of you buckled except Abu Bakr, he accepted that immediately. He says, every one of you did me a favor and I paid back that favor except for Abu Bakr. I physically cannot pay him back. Allah will pay him back on the day of judgment. Amen. He ordered every door to his masjid to be closed except the door of Abu Bakr. He says, for you, Ya Abu Bakr, the eight doors of Jannah will beg for you to walk in through them. It was men like Abu Bakr who made Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam smile. When Umar said, today I will beat Abu Bakr, he comes to the Prophet of Allah, he says, a Prophet of Allah, I come to you today and I bring you half my wealth. He says, Umar, what did you leave for your family? He says, a oh, Prophet of Allah, I left the other half for my family. Then Abu Bakr walks in. He says, a oh, Prophet of Allah, today I come, with, I come to you with all my wealth. You see, my brothers, because we are people of dunya, this is what impresses us. The fact he came with all his wealth. But by Allah, this is not what made Rasulullah smile. What made him smile was when he asked Abu Bakr, if you've come with all your wealth, what did you leave for your family? He said, I left Allah and his prophet. Then he smiled because he knows Abu Bakr now has reached the level, khalas, he's there. He's walking on dunya, but by Allah, he's already in Jannah. Men like Uthman, when he was asking for money, 
He says, a prophet of Allah, I give you 100 camels fully loaded. You see, my brothers, one camel in that time made the difference between high rollers huh? and nobodies. One camel. Uthman gave a hundred fully loaded. The Prophet of Allah asked for more money. He says, a Prophet of Allah, make it 200. He asked for more. He said, Prophet of Allah, make it 300. He asked for more money. He comes to the Prophet of Allah with 2,000 gold coins. In the authentic hadith, Rasulullah he runs his fingers through the gold with a big smile on his face and he says, nothing Uthman, that, nothing Uthman can do after today will affect his deen. These were your fathers, my brothers. These were the men who made Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa smile. It was men like Sa'ad bin Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Sa'ad bin Mu'adh, learn his name, memorize his name. For it was men like Sa'ad in the authentic hadith. For his death, for his, not a prophet, not a messenger, a man on dunya who was Muslim for seven years. How long was he Muslim for? Seven years, yet on the death of Sa'ad in the authentic hadith, the throne of Allah shook for Sa'ad. Maybe some of you don't know exactly what I'm talking about, my brothers. He's sitting with his Sahaba, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says to them, do you know the distance between the first heaven and the second? They said, Allah and his Prophet know best. He says to his companions, the distance between the first heaven and the second is a distance of 500 years. And a day with Allah is a thousand years of our days. He says the distance between the first and the second is 500. Second to the third is 500. Third to the fourth is 500. Fourth to the fifth is 500. Fifth to the sixth is 500. Sixth to the seventh is 500. Above the seven heavens is an ocean, the depth of which is 500 years. Then there are eight angels that carry the throne of Allah. That throne shook for the death of Sa'ad. Why, my brothers? Because he grew a hectic beard? No. Because he gave his life for this deen. Brother Ayman spoke about the Battle of Badr. You see, the people of Medina promised Muhammad وسلم, protection in Medina. When Rasulullah when he took 300, 300 or so men, he took some from Mecca and some from Medina, and they went to Badr, what was supposed to be an ambush, they were supposed to raid the caravan. When they got there, what was supposed to be a caravan turned to be a blown army of a thousand soldiers. So now Rasulullah is worried. So he sits his Sahaba down, and now he's making shura with them. What do we do? So those that came from Mecca, they're thinking, why are you even asking? A prophet of Allah, fight and we are with you. But he continued to ask, so who picks up on it? Sa'ad bin Mu'adh. Sa'ad was one of the leaders of the people of the Ansar. He was one of the people of Medina. So Sa'ad says, a prophet of Allah, I can't help but feel that you're asking around. Maybe you're waiting for one of the people of Medina to comment. So he shy and humbly says, yes. He says, O oh, Prophet of Allah, we will not say to you what the Jews said to Musa. But rather we will say to you, fight Ya Rasulullah and we are with you. And don't you know, O oh, Rasulullah, that the land you take from us is more beloved than the land that you leave behind. The money you spend from us, Ya Rasulullah, is more beloved to our hearts than the money that you leave behind for us. And Ya Rasulullah, the men who die from us are more beloved than the men that you leave behind. Fight and we are with you. This man, seven years Muslim, today we're dying in millions, in millions. And I challenge not the throne of Allah, rather I challenge this tree to shake. I ask you my brother, when was the last time you made Rasulullah sallallahu smile? When? Let's get to the crunch. Enough hype stories. Let's get to the crunch. When was the last time, my brother, you made your prophet smile? You see, my brothers, I have yaqeen that if Rasulullah was to enter this gathering now, I have no doubt that he would smile. 
But I fear my brothers, if he was to pick us out individually, I'm afraid that smile will become a frown. Where are we, my brothers? What made him smile, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was he left men behind who were prepared to take on his mission. Where are these men today? Who of us is ready to stand up and say, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I'm he. Labbaik, labbaik ya Rasulullah, I'm he. O oh, Prophet of Allah, your mission has become my mission. O oh, Prophet of Allah, what you fought for, I am now ready to fight for. O oh, Prophet of Allah, what you spend the nights standing and crying in dua, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I'm he. I'm here, Ya Rasulullah. You are gone, but I am one of your followers, O Prophet of Allah, and I'm going to carry on that banner. Where are these men, my brothers? Because by Allah, this is the action that made Rasulullah smile. Your bank account will not make him smile. The size of your house will not make him smile. It will not make him smile. He says, I don't fear poverty for you. Rather, what I fear is that this dunya is to open up to you and it will destroy you like it destroyed the nations before you. You want to make your prophet smile, my brother? Then take on his deen. Take on his mission. Cry for what he cried for. Bleed for what he bled for. Where are we? Look around. Look around today. Look at the condition of the Muslims. You know, I remember sitting with the Sheikh in Hajj. Ma'ala Sheikh, forgive me, but wallahi, I have to open because the heart needs to hear it. We were sitting in Hajj in Aziziyah. So the Sheikh comes up to me, he pulls out his phone, he says to me, read this email. A sister that's married, who's cheating on her husband, and doesn't want to stop. This is the ahwal of the ummah. And where are we, my brothers? Where are we? What's become our fikr? What car you drive? What brand clothes you wear? Where we going fishing at the end of the year? This? Is this what the Sahaba gave their life for? You know, I often think, if we were able to pull Hamza anhu out of the ground and say, Hamza, stand up and see the people you died for. See the ummah that came after you. Sahaba gave their life for this ummah. Why? So we can enjoy fancy cars and big homes. By Allah. La no. They gave their life so this deen can reach us, so we can carry on that banner and take it and spread it to the world. This is our mission. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, let there rise from amongst you. Who is Allah speaking to? Muslims or non-Muslims? Muslims, he says, let there arise from amongst you, O believers. What does he say? He says, let there arise from amongst you a group of people who call to khair. They enjoy that which is good and they forbid that which is wrong. Then Allah says, that these are the muflihun. This group is the successful group. I ask you, my brother, if Allah is speaking to Muslims and He's saying that this group will be the successful group, what does that leave for the others that are not from this group? If Allah is saying this group is the successful one, which group do you belong to, my brother? Allah does not want ubad. Allah does not want people who fast and pray. Get this out of your head. Allah wants soldiers who will pick up his deen and carry on with it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and I'll end with this. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in the authentic hadith. This needs to hit the heart, my brothers. Allah does not want salah. Allah does not want fasting. Allah does not want zakah. Allah wants you to make him and his prophet number one. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa tells us of a man. Tells us of a man who worshipped Allah. And then Allah ordered the angels to come down to this town and destroy it. Sahih hadith. 
So the angels come to the town, they notice the man, then the angels go back to Allah and say, Ya Allah, you ordered the destruction of this town, but in this town is a man who has never disobeyed you the blink of an eye. Who's testifying? The angels. They say, Ya Allah, he's never disobeyed you, salah, fasting, everything. What does Allah say? He says, start the destruction with him. Why? He said, because he's seen what was happening around him and he turned a blind eye to it. My brothers, who of you is ready to make Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam smile? Who of you is ready to take on his deen? This is what this camp is for. This is what this camp is for. You think the brothers get out of their way? Why? So we can sit you in front of a fancy fire? No. But to make men who will make Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam smile. And this is what we're asking for. Jazakallah khairan. I'll call you.